Hello everybody, welcome back to more Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix bonus episodes. The last time we cleared the Cat of Urn of Remembrance in Radiant Garden, we also did a whole lot of synthesizing. Well, we're going to take a break from that, take a little bit of a step back. We're going to go to Olympus Coliseum because we've got some more cups to do, and we're going to spawn in at the Cave of the Dead inner chamber because the new cups we can complete are not available with Pain and Panic. We have to go somewhere else. Also, one thing I don't think I did is... Yeah, I didn't equip any of, like, the new stuff that I made, so let's see. Star Charm, Fencer Earring... Okay, let's take off the Slayer Earring and put on Full Bloom Plus. That still gives us 5 AP, and that gives us free strength, but no magic. But it also gives us, uh, MP Haste, which is really good. And then I think we'll put on just regular Full Bloom here. Give us one extra strength over one magic. We'll keep on Cosmic Arts and the Star Charm. We got a bunch of Ethers. Nice. Uh, now that we've got the Ultima weapon, I'm going to put Decisive Pumpkin on for my Valor Form Keyblade, because that'll make our ground combos even more amazing. And that looks pretty good. Uh, Donald, you, you doing alright over there? Yeah, of course you are. Of course you are! <laughs> uh, I bet I can equip better stuff for him, though. Maybe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Donald, you get the Cosmic Chain. And, uh, Arcasus Plus, whatever that is. Goofy, we've got better stuff for you. Put on the Chaos Anklet. And the Fire Gun Bangle. And, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, there you go, Donald. Take the Shadow Archive. That's even better for you. And I'll give you the Slayer Earring. <laughs> or, and you don't get anything. Giving the magic boost to Sora, AP boosts, uh, one to Donald, one to Goofy. Cool, now you can get Fire Boost on. Goofy! Hyper Healing. Alrighty! Yeah, so we gotta go to Hades' chamber in order to get the new cups. Hades' chamber, here we go. Hades is just hanging out here, but he's he's willing to talk to us, even though we beat his butt earlier. Welcome to the Hades Paradox Cup. So, we have three new cups. There's the Pain and Panic Paradox Cup, the Cerberus Paradox Cup, and the Titan Paradox Cup, which are basically... Harder versions of the cups that we've completed before. Oh man, the battle level is way higher than what I am. Okay, Pan and Panic Paradox Cup. Fight alongside your friends. The drive gauge can't be used, but limits consume less MP. So it's the same rules, but the enemies are going to be tougher. It's literally just tougher versions of all the other cups. Well, Duck Flare is going to be awesome. Duckware's already stupidly overpowered. Over. Come on. Take that, you stupid shadow. Donald's like, I'm blind! This is awesome! Yeah. Oh, I just totally set all of the bombs on fire. Oh, well. Yeah, take that. Uh-huh, take that. Well, I might have to do some level grinding in order to be good enough for the other cups. I'm, I'm definitely a high enough level for this one, but... Oh boy, more hot rods. Aw, oh, yeah. You can't stand up to Refuga. Bolt Reversal, take that. Oh, 
Oh man, Garden Break is so powerful. Actually, at this point, like, all of my combo finishers are really powerful. Ooh, and double score mode. Sweet. Look at all those points. We're already at match seven. Holy cow. In hindsight, I should have put Magnet, or Magnica, on my shortcut. Alright, let's take my Trinity Limit! Aw, oh, yeah! Good work, fellas. Party must have. Oh, but it's just rapid thrusters. <laughs> this will be a cinch. It's literally mash X to win. <laughs> Magnet splash definitely helps. Am I just gonna kill them all? <laughs> I might kill them all before time runs out. Yep. <laughs> In your face. Semi-final. <laughs> Did you really think you could beat me? <laughs> Yuck! I got that, Sora! Alright. Time for Leon and Yuki. This is where we're gonna go just hammer Duck Flare. <laughs> Yeah, well, that was easy. Nice job, Donald. Welcome to the Hades Paradox Cup. Booyah! <laughs> the under gate, the under drone. Extreme! Alright, so now we're going to try the Cerberus Paradox Cup. Turn to level 70, which is higher a level than I am. And we're fighting solo with Sora. But, drive gauge fills faster and Sora can use drives alone. So, final form time. I'm not going to even switch to Magnet. Let's go! That's right, I think these ghosts are immune to magic, but the core ghosts can only be hurt by magic. Um, Ultima Weapon and Bond of Flame, my Thyronic is just going to be insane. Who needs to be a high enough level when you're just amazing with final? Oh yeah. Don't mess with final form, Sora. Oh, and it's starting to rain. Where I am. I'll take out that stupid shaman. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I love how even using an Eeper counts as an attack in final form. Like just popping an Eeper will make your Keyblade spin as an attack. It's fantastic. Also, look how fast my MP meter is going to refill here in MP Recharge now. Partly thanks to, mostly thanks to Ultima Weapon, but also because of the full boom plus that I have equipped now. Fight in the dark. Oh no, I can barely see. <laughs> Whatever will I do? Yeah, yeah, I don't care. Now we're fighting Cerberus. Yeah, 
forget it. Final form Pyraga against Cerberus ain't all that useful. We're just gonna combo him to death. Yeah, take that. <laughs> okay, well that was a cinch. Oh, also... Donald back. Alright, now let's try the Titan Paradox Cup. Again, it's a soul... Oh wait, hang on. Before I do that... Before I do that, we are going to get Magniga on. And we're going to abuse Stitch. Because it's Solo Sora with summons. I suppose I could also use Peter Pan, but I feel like Stitch might be better. Let's go! Ah, gather. I feel like Genie could also be useful for some of these fights. Gather. Back off. This is it. This is it. Yeah, if you're on HP, Stitch will play his ukulele to make the HP orbs drop. But because we're in the Coliseum and no HP orbs drop, instead it just makes a bunch of points nice. drop. So we can use this to get an outrageously high score. And if you want to do all the Jiminy's journal entries, which I will not be doing because that doesn't actually get you anything except the, a trophy for PS4. And I already have that trophy. So, but if you want to get the high score, then use Stitch when you're at low HP. He makes just an insane amount of HP, or uh, just an insane amount of points up here. Whenever you want to heal my MP, that would, that would be great. experience points while in the arena, but oh well. Oh, Crimson Jazzes? I don't think so. Semi-final round. Give me strength. Ah! Oh no, not the Devastators. Alright, Peter Pan, I need your help. 
<laughs> Is that all you got? No! Look at how much HP Hercules has. Is <laughs> that all you got? Alright, Hercules is an easy fight. Hey, Hercules, why are you participating in the Hades Paradox Cup? Or the Titan Paradox Cup? Take that, Herc. Sweet! Well, that's the Paradox Cups done. And now that we've cleared those free, there's a new one. The Hades Paradox Cup. Hades Paradox Cup. Fight alongside your friends. There are no special rules for this tournament. No experiences gained. Tournament level, 99. I recommend you be max level before you try this. This is basically the Hades Cup of the game. There's 50 rounds, just like in Kingdom Hearts 1. And it's arguably even tougher than that one is. Orin, I thought I told you to get out of my party. <laughs> you know you want me, Sora. Anyhow, the Hades, the Hades Paradox Cup is going to need its own episode in order to go through because it's that long. And I'm also only level 67. So yeah, I don't think that that's gonna happen. So instead what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna continue for, with synthesis material grinding. And uh, as well as that, I'm going to try to get to max level in this episode. New episode is added. I'll cut almost all of it out, though. So, we're going to go off to the world that never was. And we're going to start by level, our level grinding at the Altar of Nod. And like I said before, if you want to level grind, equip the Gullwing Keyblade. And the Experience Boost ability. And then, oh, we're also going to need Fyraga. Set to Shortcut. And then just go final form, low HP through World That Never Was. Cool, so I just made a regular ribbon from the Petite Ribbon with Plus a Serenity Gem. Ribbons are pretty good. They raise your defense a little bit and they raise all elemental resistances by a lot. And they also just raise your neutral resistance by a lot, which is fantastic. Alright, it's Centurion, I need uh, Shadow Market. Oh, yeah, I need more Lost Illusions. And Manifest Illusions, great. For Power Band, I need two more Mythal Stones. Got two more Mythal Stones, bada beam, bada boom. Power band, bada beam, bada boom. We get the Buster Band, has extremely high defense. Excellent. I need another Remembrance Crystal. Actually, I, should, I could use a couple more Remembrance Crystals because I kind of want a lot of those upgraded Serenity Crystals. They're going to be very, very useful. Oh yeah, I just got negative combo as an ability. That's going to be really useful. I'm also going to equip the Lucky Ring now that I'm going to get back into the Cavern of Remembrance. Hopefully that'll increase the drop rate of those precious Remembrance Crystals. Well, it will increase the drop rate of those precious Remembrance Crystals. And you can get as many uh, Lucky Rings as you want. They're just kind of costly to make. Anyhow, we gotta go back to that Conveyor Belt room and kill some Omega Devastators. Not their actual name. Alright, well, I'm, equ I'm equipping the ribbon on Sora. So now he's got the Grand Ribbon, the Petite Ribbon, and the Regular Ribbon all at once. Plus the Cosmic Belt, because that gives insane defense. Uh, Donald has some new weapons. We got the Plain Mushroom Plus. A staff with some magic power. That kind of, that kind of sucks. Oh, that really sucks. It has zero strength and only free magic. But we also have Precious Mushroom Plus, which gives Donald an extra MP over Save the Queen Plus. And gives the ability MP Hastera. I think he's going to equip that as his main weapon. That seems like a good idea to me. 
Goofy also got the Frozen Pride last time. Doesn't give any ability, only has five strength, but it's easy for him to guard attacks with it. I still prefer to save the King Plus with its damage control ability. That just seems like a winner to me. Also, these core Bookmasters here have an extremely rare chance of dropping a very rare weapon for Goofy. So I'm kind of trying to see if I can get that. So far, I've gotten a lot of Serenity Gems and Remembrance Gems, but no weapon. We can finally buy Dent Stones from the shop! Oh, nice! Alright, we're gonna make a Serenity Crystal, plus a Serenity Gem, and we get a Manifest Illusion. So this is how we're gonna get Manifest Illusions for the various recipes that we need. Alright, well, unfortunately we also still need Lost Illusions, and we have to fight the Data Organization members in order to get those. Oh, we also need some more Remembrance Shards. How fun times, eh? <laughs> Well, uh, I'll keep, I'll just keep a hold of these, just in case we need them later. Anyhow, back to more level grinding. Alright, we've officially reached max level. It only took a very long time going back and forth throughout the world, but never was, but we finally got it. Yes! Oh, man. That took a while. I will probably cut all of that out. <laughs> I literally just kept going laps down from the top of... Uh, world that never was, and like picking and choosing which enemies to fight based on that, because I didn't fight every enemy. I, I mainly went for the creepers, which were really tiny, spawned in large groups, and thus gave a ton of experience for very little cost. Anyhow, oh, I now have 216 AP, so apparently that's the cap. Anyhow, let's see. All right, so we have another finishing plus now. Excellent, I want that. We have Negative Combo, which is an ability that decreases the maximum combo in the ground and midair by one, so it's basically the Fenrir Keyblade's ability. If we have this equipped and the Fenrir Keyblade equipped and no air combo pluses or combo pluses, then we literally don't have combos, we just go straight to the finishers, which actually can have a very nice effect. There's Berserk Charge as well, this is the Fatal Crest Keyblade's ability. Ah, uh, that can be pretty nice, I'm not sure if I want it right now, but we'll definitely be using that later on. Drive Converter, we don't need money at this point, so sure, why not? Thunder Boost is the last ability we learned once we reach level 99, makes our Thunder spell more powerful. And other than that, we really, none of the rest of these are that great. Like, Upper Slash I never use, it's not even as good as Finishing Leap, which, and it's basically the same thing. Dodge Slash whiffs too much for it to be useful. Aerial Sweep and Aerial Dive are just inferior to Aerial Spiral. All of the auto ones you don't want, because they can override reaction commands. Combo Plus and Air Combo Plus have their place, but you don't want them equipped all the time. Again, ne Negative Combo has its place, you don't want it equipped all the time. Berserk Charge. Sometimes it can be annoying, because... Well, the thing about the Berserk Charge is... You can't... It's meant to be like you can't finish bosses off when you're in MP Recharge, because you can't do re uh, the finishers. But if you do like an aerial combo and use horizontal slash, which is square, that's not a finisher, so you can use it in Berserk Charge, but that counts as a finisher, so you can finish bosses off of that. However, that also just means you can't use combo finishers during MP Recharge, which is not always ideal, because combo finishers are really powerful. Magic Lock-On I don't particularly like. And then no experience, it's pretty obvious why you don't want that. Alright, Donald, oh, Donald has a ton more AP. We'll do auto healing, because why not? We'll have Fantasia on, because why not? And, I mean, sure, you can have Draw Eclipse to Donald, why not? Goofy! Goofy, I want you to have Auto Healing. Item Boost, sure. Okay, so if I have any extra AP boosts, I'm giving them to Goofy. But I don't. Whoa, how did I get that many Drive Recoveries? I also have an insane amount of Dent Shards. Let's hand all those over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's insane. But at this point, we need lost illusions for all the rest of the recipes we have to make. We can't do anything of that. No, uh, we can now buy dense stones. Yay. There are special goals for like collecting an X amount of like every material, but we ain't going to do those. That doesn't do anything. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'm Colorful Artie. Tune in next time. Oh wait, before I do that. 
Before I forget, I'm equipping uh, Ultimate Weapon again. I was also using Oath Keeper as my Final Form Keyblade because my magic was high enough that I didn't need the Thunder Boost and I wanted to stay in Final Form for longer. I'm going to put that back to Bond of Flame now. Anyhow, next time on Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, we will be attempting the Hades Paradox Cup here in Olympus Coliseum. That's probably going to be the only thing we do. Now that we're max level, we should be more than well enough equipped to take it on. I'm going to just customize Magna because we're going to want that. Anyhow, look forward to that next time. We're going to clear the Hades Cup. And then after that, we should only have a couple more things left to do. So, look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. Hey, folks, this is Artie from the future for an important announcement. So, I'm recording this after I finished recording all of the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix Let's Play and bonus videos, and I actually started editing the videos and uploading them to YouTube when it occurred to me that I never actually went and read all of the secret and some reports. <laughs> I got to one of the early episodes where I got the first report, and I'm like, I'm gonna read the reports as we go, and then that never happened, and I totally forgot about them. So, I'm gonna basically read them all right now, and I'm gonna splice this in with one of the bonus videos uh, when I actually edit that. I'll probably add this to one of the bonus videos that has the least amount of gameplay footage for you to watch. Anyhow, if you want to read the reports, let's see where we gotta go. Let's go to Collection, and some reports. So we've got Secret Ansem Report 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 all the way up to 13. And I believe a Secret Ansem Report number 2 was the only one I actually read. We're going to read them all, including the one that I've already read before, and we'll kind of see what these are all about. So, let's start with Report number 1. Secret Ansem Report 1. My efforts these many years have come to fruition. It, with the world I govern having become a paradise worthy of being called Radiant Garden. Nurtured by the pure water that is the source of life, fragrant flowers bloom in abundance, and the people face each day with hopeful smiles. But where there is light, darkness also lurks. As I've noted in my earlier reports, I must solve the mystery of this darkness of the heart. This paradise depends on it. I shall perform an experiment to probe the depths of a person's heart. One of my own apprentices, Xehanort, has volunteered to be a subject. The young man has served me ever since I nursed him back from death's door some years ago. He had lost all of his memories at the time, but later showed remarkable intellectual curiosity and readily absorbed my teachings, gaining deep wisdom. Any mental immaturity is surely due to his young age. If I explore Xehanort's heart with my psychological tests, I may be able to recall the past locked away within. My apprentice Evan has also shown great interest in Xehanort's memories. But is he really the right subject? Xehanort does indeed exhibit extraordinary talents. Too extraordinary. Perhaps they are even superhuman. So all of these reports, and I believe all of the reports from the first game, or perhaps only like one of the reports from the first game, are written by Ansem the Wise. Actually, no, I think I think a lot of the reports from the first game were actually written by Xehanort's Heartless, aka Ansem. Or maybe Xehanort when he took on the name Ansem, but before he became a Heartless and a Nobody. And Evan is referring to Vexen before he lost his heart and became Vexen, which is interesting. So Xehanort is, seems like an interesting character. So this is the one I read before. I have made a grave mistake. My study of the darkness of the heart begun with a simple psychological test and quickly snowballed. Spurred on by my youngest apprentice, Ienzo, I constructed a massive laboratory in the basement of my castle. Unbeknownst to me, my six apprentices then began collecting a large number of subjects on which to perform dangerous experiments into the darkness of the heart. As soon as I found out, I called my apprentices together and ordered them not only to cease their studies, but to destroy the results of their research thus far. What on earth was happening within the hearts of my six beloved apprentices? While pursuing the mystery of the darkness of the heart, could they themselves have strayed into its depths? Yet I remain the most foolish of all for having begun these experiments. We are not meant to interfere in the depths of another's heart, no matter what our reasons for doing so are. And my error plunged me into despair. A visitor from another world soothed my dejected soul. A tiny king named Mickey came wielding a legendary key, the infamous Keyblade, said to bring forth both chaos and prosperity to the world. He is a very knowledgeable he was very knowledgeable on many topics, and we deepened our friendship as we conversed companionably. Upon his advice, I decided to review the data obtained at my basement lab. That is when I discovered the Ansem reports. Though they bore my name, the only one I had written was number zero. Apparently, he had gone on to pen numbers one through eight himself. Yes, the first subject in my foolish experience. Yeah, so this is confirming Ansem report zero, which I'm not sure if that was even in the first game, was written by Ansem the Wise, and then the original Ansem reports one through eight were written by Xehanort. 
Also, when I was coming talking about up here with Ienzo, uh, where's Ienzo? Yeah, Ienzo is referring to Zexion before he became Zexion. Alright, report number three. Chaos affects not only this world, but many other worlds besides. In the Ansem reports my apprentice Xehanort had written under my name, I had found records of his hideous experiments, along with his hypothesis about the door that had appeared out of the darkness in my basement. All living fiends have hearts, and all hearts hold darkness deep within. Worlds are no exception. If a world is a bean, the heart it holds must be colossal and the darkness at its core must be monstrous indeed. Did Xehanort pass through that door in an attempt to contact that dark realm? No, not only Xehanort. It appears my other five apprentices, believing it was for the sake of research, stared deep into the darkness and were pulled into it. Evan, Ienzo, Brague, Dylan, and Alias. They have ceased to be human. I too have had everything taken away from me, banished to a hollow realm of nothingness. What is Xehanort hoping to gain with my pilfered existence? Will my people cease to smile? If the light of the hope has been extinguished, I shall henceforth walk with darkness as a friend. Here in the realm of nothingness, to which I have been relegated, darkness in the midst of nothing, darkness in zero, thus I will be known as Diz, discarding the stolen name Ansem, and going in search of revenge. Interesting. So yeah, this report's selling, so Evan is Vexen, Ienzo is Zexian, Brag is Zigbar, Dylan is Zaldin, and then Alias is Lexius. So all of them were apprentices to Ansem the Wise, along with Xehanort, and then they all became the first six members of Organization 13. So this is kind of referring to them uh, losing their hearts and becoming nobodies, which is kind of where they started to go way off the deep end. Interesting. I've never read these before, by the way. <laughs> Secret answer report number four. The distant days spent in that beautiful paradise are an illusion to me now. How long have I been here, banished to the realm of nothingness? It is only by relying upon my anger and hatred that I have been able to retain my sense of self here, where all existence is nullified. My heart is being overcome with hatred towards my apprentices, possessed by the darkness, and with the anger I feel for stupidly allowing myself to be betrayed. Is this darkness eating away at my heart? I cannot continue to idle away my time here. What are Xehanort and the others attempting to do? I must unravel the mystery of these Ansem reports, intercept my apprentices, and defeat them. That is my mission, the only way to repay the world for my sins. Those beings who lack hearts, the heartless, must be the key. Except the heartless actually have hearts. The darkness of the heart made flesh, cursed shadows who not only lack hearts, but multiply by seizing hearts from any and all living things. Where they have come from, or where have they come from, and where are they going? Three elements combine to create life, a heart, a soul, and a body. But what of the soul, what of the soul and body left behind when the heart is lost? When the soul leaves the body, its vessel, life, gives way to death. But what about when the heart leaves? A being does not perish when its heart leaves its body. The heart alone disappears into the darkness. There is little time. If I remain in this realm much longer, I will certainly learn these answers the hard way. My voice is already a captive of the darkness. My heart, not my voice. Alright, looks like Ansem, or Diz, was going a little crazy being in the realm of darkness. Seeker report number five. In this realm, where all existence has been disintegrated, I have just barely managed to preserve my sense of self by continuing to think and to write. It is a place where even time has lost all meaning. Eternity is as but a moment here. I must make haste. Certainly their plans are already underway. The Heartless must be the key to unraveling this mystery. The six traitors were operating a laboratory that churned out those cursed shadows. Not only did they generate pure blood Heartless from living hearts, but they then used those Heartless to synthesize artificial versions of the creatures as well. These synthetic Heartless bore insignias and were called emblems. Pure blood or emblem, these Heartless act not only... These Heartless act only to fulfill their instinctive needs. They single-mindedly detect hearts and swarm around them. A human's commands would be ineffective. The Heartless would easily steal the human's heart and use it to increase their own ranks. But what if an even stronger Heartless was giving the orders? If he cast aside his own soul and body and became a Heartless, wouldn't he be able to control the otherwise intractable Heartless? Furthermore, wouldn't he be planning to make use of the creature's instincts? If the heart-seeking Heartless have their sights set on a larger, more powerful heart, their ultimate goal is crystal clear. The largest heart in existence, the heart of the world. This is all conjecture, but it would seem he is utilizing the Heartless in his search for a path leading to the heart of the world. 
Yeah, this is where things get complicated. They expound a little more on this in uh, a future Kingdom Hearts game, the difference between Pure Blood Heartless and Emblem Heartless. So Pure Blood Heartless are basically like Heartless of Pure Darkness, so these are the Shadows, the Neo Shadows, the Possessors, Dark Sides, any Heartless that doesn't like release a heart basically upon their defeat. I believe, I'm not sure if these things are actually like contain hearts or if they're literally just beings of Pure Darkness. But basically, when you kill a pure-blooded Heartless, they don't release a heart to Kingdom Hearts. Emblem Heartless are things like large bodies, soldiers, air soldiers, red nocturnes. Basically, every Heartless that is like colorful and has the Heartless emblem on it. That's an Emblem Heartless, and then they do release captive hearts when they are uh, destroyed. Yeah, kind of complicated. Secret Report number six. My choice to befriend darkness here in the midst of nothingness was a sound one. The moment I stared straight ahead with a calm heart, neither rejecting darkness nor fearing it, I gained a newfound power. A superhuman power. The power of darkness. It is likely Xehanort and the others were enraptured by this power, eventually becoming its prisoners. I do not intend to allow my heart to be devoured by the darkness as they did, of course. With this new power, I uncovered the co a corridor of darkness that connects the realm of nothingness to the outside world. While it is difficult to come and go as I please, my banishment is now a thing of the past. To deceive Xehanort and my apprentices, I first used my power to change form before returning to the Realm of Light. As I had suspected, Xehanort had become a Heartless. Under my name, he commanded other Heartless in quests to snatch away the hearts of many different worlds. At the center of the hearts Xehanort had stolen was Kingdom Hearts, which attracts tremendous darkness to itself and attempts to send any and all matter back into its depths. The other five have disappeared. Have they become Heartless like Xehanort? Or did they vanish after Xehanort exploited them? I became familiar with an unusual entity while pursuing the truth. It is the heart, it is the soul and the body that remain when a being loses its heart. When a heartless is born, these entities disappear from the realm of light to be reborn as entirely new beings in a completely different realm. Yeah, but not really because Sora got his body back in the first game in Hollow Bastion, but also he did it because Roxas was existing. In the don't sorry, don't think about it! <laughs> Secret report number seven. While beings born of darkness and those lacking hearts may find them convenient, it is dangerous for others to make such much use of the corridors of darkness. Darkness erodes the heart. In search of a place to proceed with my research and planning away from prying eyes, I found myself in Twilight Town. It is a quiet village forgotten in the chasm between light and darkness. I situated myself in the basement of an abandoned mansion standing beyond the woods. My underground research resulted in one new discovery after another. When a Heartless is born, the body and soul left behind are reborn into this world as a different being. They possess different intentions than their Heartless brethren, and while it is unclear what these sentient things are after, it would appear that they are responsible for much bedlam in the world. My erstwhile friend, uh, the Kane and his subjects, along with a hero wielding the Keyblade, are battling the Heartless even as a new threat approaches. This new fret, they have given themselves a fitting name, I suppose. These non-beings. Nobodies. A great number of nobodies have lost human form, as have the Heartless. Yet the nobody born of someone with a strong heart retains its shape, but with the faintest visible changes. It appears that my betrayers have retained their human forms as nobodies, and are gathering more followers in the hopes of furthering a new scheme. Organization 13, formed of 13 nobodies with my betrayers at its core, has divided into two. They are said to be carrying out some sort of research. Seeking to uncover the plans of this organization, I have decided to head, uh, the, to head for where six of its members have gathered, towering over the outer limits of the realm between darkness and light, Castle Oblivion. So this is kind of referring to how Diz came to Castle Oblivion in Chain of Memories. Probably we're about to learn about how he met Riku. Secret report number eight. It appears that I have been too distracted by the behavior of Xehanort and his cohorts and by the events occurring in their vicinity. My friend's struggle to protect the Realm of Light from the threat of Heartless is now over, with Xehanort's Heartless, going by the name Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, defeated at last. The other wielder of the Keyblade, this hero, traveled from world to world, stealing up keyholes and laying Heartless low. Meanwhile, the king who had dived into the Realm of Darkness worked with the Keyblade-wielding hero to close the door to Kingdom Hearts from the realms of both of Darkness and Light, thus holding off the threat of Tremendous Darkness. But there are still a great number of Heartless afoot, and organiza Organization 13, and the Nobodies continue to be active in the shadows. Indeed, the world is still a very dangerous place. We must find a way to do battle with these enemies. Thus, I will make both, both a make amends and have my revenge. It is for this reason that I have infiltrated Castle Oblivion. 
It consists of 13 floors above and 12 floors below ground, with the contents of its white rooms transforming in response to his, its visitors' memories. Organization 13 was conducting experiments on memory here. The subject of, in these experiments, a girl named Namine, appeared to possess extremely unusual abilities. Were they attempting to derive something from these powers? Refusing to be distracted by Organ Organization 13, I had returned to my own secret research when a new visitor appeared at the castle today. It was Sora, the Keyblade-wielding hero who had defeated Ansem and his companions. Deep underground, the stench of darkness arose. All of the players are coming together, it would seem. Yep, more Chain of Memories. Answer report number nine. I should have expected nothing less from the Keyblade-wielding hero. Sora and his friends defied the machinations of Organization 13 and rescued Namine. Namine was a witch who controlled the memories of others. Most likely, these powers were achieved through a special process when she was born. Namine is a nobody created when a young girl's heart left her body. Yet, she has no corresponding heartless. This is because the young girl in this case was a princess. Kairi, a resident of Radiant Garden over which I had ruled, was one of the seven princesses that upheld the Realm of Light. With no darkness in her heart, Kairi produced no Heartless, and instead of vanishing, her body remained in the Realm of Light. In other words... Yes, her body. In other words, both the Nobody called Namine and the Heartless, proof of a lost heart, are extremely unstable beings who lack the bodies needed to produce a Nobody. Therefore, they also lack Kairi's memories. One reason for this may be that Kairi's heart did not return to the darkness when it separated from her body, but rather migrated to another vessel, deep within Sora's heart. That is, Namine is an alter ego of the Kairi who has already direct interf directly interfered with Sora's heart. Could this be why Sora and those whose hearts are connected to him were able to have their memories controlled? She is a non-being in the truest sense of the word, having not even become a true nobody and with nowhere left to go. She is but the most fleeting of shadows. I never knew that, actually. I guess this, they kind of try to explain why Namine has these memory powers, and also why she looks different from Kairi, because she's not like a true nobody, but it's still overly complicated for no reason. Report number 10. Sora went to sleep in order to recover the memories he lost in Castle Oblivion. It would take quite some time to bring back all of the memories he had created in his lifetime, but or Organization 13 held sway over Castle Oblivion. Sora would need to be kept someplace more secure. I persuaded Namine to move the slumbering Sora to Twilight Town for safekeeping. Namine. As I have written here before, she is a most unusual being, born of the same process as a nobody, but lacking virtually all the elements of a nobody. Perhaps she continues drawing in hopes of capturing that which she lacks, the memories of others, especially Sora. I have arrived at a hypothesis. I believe that Namine was born as a special type of nobody when Sora attacked himself with the Keyblade, causing his and Kairi's hearts to leave their bodies simultaneously. Namine emerged as Kairi's nobody, but the body and soul necessary to exist as a nobody belong to Sora. What? When a person's heart is stolen, a heartless is born with no sense of self, and the body and soul left behind give rise to a nobody. But what if one willingly releases one's heart from one's body? Sora and Xehanort retain their selfhood even after becoming heartless. Then there are Kairi and Namine. Kairi was exceptional for having had no darkness within her heart. Also exceptional was that her heart, once freed, migrated to a new vessel, Sora. These co this combination of these two theoretically unlikely exceptions may be behind this anomaly. There are matters I must to attend to while Sora is asleep. A new ally has appeared on the scene, Riku. Answer report number 11. I was reunited with an old friend at Castle Oblivion, but was unable to disclose my identity. If he knew the situation, he would likely try to stop me from carrying out my revenge. As much as I would dearly love to converse with him, as in the old days, that is now but a hopeless dream. My friend has been fighting in the Realm of Darkness. Most likely, he has found his way there through Traverse Town. Like Castle Oblivion, the village also rests, that village also rests in the cleft between light and dark. It consists of the remnants of worlds whose hearts have been stolen by the Heartless. It is where those who have barely escaped the destruction of their worlds eventually find themselves. This realm between is quite unstable, with corridors of darkness appearing from time to time. Whenever a world disappears, some of its inhabitants must arrive here through these corridors. Surely Sora traveled these same corridors of darkness when he first came to Traverse Town. It seems my friend, fighting in the Realm of Darkness, appeared in Castle Oblivion through a corridor of darkness constructed by Organization 13. My new ally Riku also effected his return via one of these corridors. He swore to me that he would give his all for his best friend Sora. In fact, Sora's memories have been in slow to return. Thus, I have asked Riku to bring me another Sora. 
his nobody. Sora is indispensable if I am to achieve my goal. I require the Keyblade-wielding hero to fly through the Realm of Light and defeat Organization 13. Okay, so now, yeah, now we're kind of giving Diz's motivations. Report number 12. Apart from Namine, not, uh, nobodies retain their memories of their time as humans, but Sora's nobody, Roxas, has lost Sora's memories. This is likely because Sora's time as a Heartless was short, having recovered his heart and returned to his human form soon after leaving behind Roxas, his nobody. It would seem Roxas is much like Namine. Namine is Kairi's nobody, but came into being via Sora's body and soul. Likewise, Roxas is Sora's nobody, but was left behind because Sora's Heartless regained human form using Kairi's heart instead of his own. It may be that Sora's memories are slow to return because the half of him that is Roxas is still lacking. I must convert Roxas into Data and return him to Sora. As a member of Organization 13, it was exceedingly difficult to bring Roxas in. Having lost to Roxas once, Riku laid everything on the line and used the power of darkness in their second battle, only just managing to bring Roxas back with him. But Organization 13 grows ever nearer. Here, Twilight Town, is where Re Roxas was reborn as a nobody. This is where Roxas first encountered Organization 13 and joined its ranks. They are bound to just search this place thoroughly. First, I shall convert all of Twilight Town into data and construct a world duplicate in Sora's memories. I shall place Roxas within that world to live out his days and regain those memories. There is little time. The organization's schemes must be making steady progress as well. So this is explaining the beginning of the game. <laughs> Alright, final report. Report number 13. Tomorrow Sora awakens. My long and drawn out revenge is nearing its end. Xehanort who took everything away from me. Though as a Heartless, he is no more. As the leader of Organization 13, his ambition once again is to capture Kingdom Hearts, the most colossal heart of all. His Heartless had attempted to draw out the great darkness of Kingdom Hearts, created from the hearts of all worlds. His nobody, however, is now almost finished gathering human hearts to be assimilated into Kingdom Hearts as well. The Fool. Only one mystery remains. How did Xehanort manage to open the door that appeared in the basement of my castle? No. Any theory posited now, when everything is nearing completion, would be meaningless. Roxas, Ansem, Namine. They defy all logic, yet there they are. Singular exceptions to the rule. The theories proposed to me and by Organization 13 have been blown to pieces by a handful of strong-hearted individuals. Sora, Kairi, Riku. Ah yes, Riku. Though his heart had its weaknesses, making it prone to darkness, he found support in the hope he had discovered beyond suffering. This hope allowed him to stand his ground and turn the darkness in his heart from an enemy into his greatest weapon. When all of this is over, it is my fervent hope that he will be able to return with Sora to his island. If I can, I would like to return to Radiant Garden, to look once more upon the beautiful water, the lovely flowers, and the hopeful smiles of the people. Dear Kane, my friend, I believe that at some point in time you will come across these, my truthful accounts. How I wish I would, could have chatted with you again. I was a fool, obsessed with revenge. Forgive me. And that's kind of a chronicle of Ansem the Wise's role in the Kingdom Hearts games. That was my first time reading them, they were interesting, and wow, that actually took a whole lot longer than I thought it would. I could almost make this its own bonus episode all by itself. Maybe I will, I'll just have to play it by ear and see. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.